Hi, you are welcome back once again to the Smart Way Lectures on the Science Ambassador Series. This is a series of lectures we are running on all the areas in science. And today we are here with you to continue on thermochemistry, also called energy and energy changes. Today we are going to look at the standard entropy of solution. Okay, we are going to look at the standard entropy of solution. Now to understand this, okay, we have to look at what a solution is and what happens before we form a solution. The energy that is involved in the process is what we call the entropy of what of solution. So quickly let's look at solution here. Good. So how is a solution formed? Now a solution is formed when I have I add solutes. When I add solutes, okay, to a solvent. So when I add solute to a solvent, I get what to call a solution. I get what to call a solution here. And when I add solute to a solvent, when I add solute to a solvent, good. I get what to call what a solution. I get what to call a solution. Good. Now, and so it means that a solution is a uniform medium or a uniform mixture formed by reacting what or by adding. A solute to what to a solvent. Now let's take a typical example of that. Let's take a typical example of a solute. Now I can have what you call normal salt, okay? Now and then my solvent, I can I can pick water as my solvent, okay? Now anytime I add this, the salt must dissolve completely to give a one uniform solution, and that's uniform, okay? That that a one uniform medium. And that uniform medium is what we call the solution. So here I'm going to get what we call the salt solution. I'm going to what we call get the what the salt solution here. Have you gotten that? So a solution is a uniform mixture from when a solute dissolves in water in a solvent. Okay, very very simple. But you see, for a salt to dissolve in water, it takes some amount of energy. There is always some amount of energy that it takes for the salt to be able to dissolve in water. Now, why am I saying that? When you consider the structure of salt. When you consider the structure of salt, we have the salt, okay? The salt molecules are being held by what we call electrostatic forces. The salt molecules are held by what we call electrostatic forces. Remember that salts are made up of ions, the positive side and the negative side. So, the positive side and negative side. And we know that the cation, okay, the sodium, is plus and then this is what is negative oh, good and so we have what we call the positive side we have what we call the negative side we have what we call the positive side now we've got the negative side we have what we call the positive side and the negative side now what is happening here now because of this positive and negative side there is what we call attractive forces between the molecules of the sodium chloride that is the salt now so for this salt to dissolve in water so for this salt to dissolve in water, it must be overcome, okay, by the water. It must be overcome by the water, okay. Now the energy that it will take for the water to, to overcome the salt in order to dissolve inside is what we call the entropy of of solution, okay. So we are going to look at this at a detail level how this particular okay reaction takes place for the salt to dissolve in water. Now this is what it is. Now let's. Let me give you a beaker of water, or let me give you a beaker where I have a beaker containing my water. Now, and I have my salt coming in. I'm now pouring the salt inside. Now, we are going to look at this how the energy, okay, okay, uh, can where the energy come from. Okay, we are going to look at this where the energy come from. And so, when I pour salt in water, when I pour salt in water, when I pour salt in water. Now quickly what happened? Water molecules, okay, water quickly runs and comes to surround the what? The salt. Now I'll tell you why. Water quickly runs and come and surround the salt. So usually six water molecules will come and surround the salt. Six of them will come and surround the salt. So we'll have this. We'll have that. We'll have this. We have that so i have six water molecules here surrounding one of this 
the salt. Now, why is this thing happening? Because we know that for any compound, there is what we call positive side and negative side. And so, we have what we call the positive side, which is the, what, the cation. We have the negative side. And water also have that same feature. The water, the, the water also have that same feature. So, water also have the negative side, which we all know to be what? The positive side of water is H+. Plus, and then the negative side of water is what? The OH-. minus. Okay, we have the OH- minus and the H+. Plus. And so, quickly, because there are what we call electrical charges in both water and the what? The ionic compound. They come and what? They interact with themselves. So, there is what we call, quickly, there is what we call an interaction between the water molecules and then the what? The ionic what? Compound. Because of their uh, what charges, there is what we call interaction, okay, between them. So water tends what to attract the what the water molecules comes closer to the what to the salt, attracting them. Now, but there's something that happens here. Very very wonderful thing happens here. Now, what happens? Now, what basically takes place is that you have the water molecules now coming to attract attract the what we call the cation. So the cation. Okay, the cations within the ionic compound or within the salt, the, the, the cation within the salt are attracted by the water molecules. They are being they are being pulled away by the water molecules. Now, what is pulling them? Of course, we know that the water is negative, and so it is the negative side of the water that is pulling the what the the, the sodium plus onto itself. Okay, so the H that is the sodium plus okay are being attracted by the water that is onto the negative side of the water that is the OH and so this happens and at the same time too the negative side of the water is also repelling the what the the negative side of the the salt and so there's what to call there's what to call attraction and repulsion happening at the same time while the water is surrounding the what the the salt that's what called any compound but the attraction between this but the attraction between this the attraction between the water the attraction between the water, okay, the attraction between the water and then the cation within the salt, okay, because it is an, it is, it's an attractive, okay, uh, forces, it liberates energy, okay, energy is liberated during the process, okay, it liberates energy, so it liberates energy in the process, good, so the water is attracting the what, the cation, and because it is pulling it onto itself, energy is what, it's liberated during the process, now, this energy, that is liberated during the process okay it's what we call the hydration energy so this is where the hydration energy come from good when salt gets into water water quickly surrounds the what the salt because of the positive and the negative side of the salt the water quickly surrounds the salt now the negative side of the water tries to what to pull the positive side of the salt and onto itself okay so this cause what to call energy to what to be liberated the at attraction cause energy to what to be liberated now at the same time too the negative side of the salt is also being repelled by the negative side of the water and so this will also cause what a decrease in energy so there's also called what called an absorption energy so energy what is absorbed in the process and so we have water here we have water here that okay so we have what water here uh, and we have the negative side of it okay the negative side of the water is also attracting the what the negative uh, is uh, is repelling the authentic negative side of the of the salt. So quickly, there's what we call this is not liberation energy. It's what we call an absorption. So energy is absorbed. Energy is absorbed during the process. So it causes what a decrease in the what we call energy that's supposed to what to come out in the process. Now, the energy, the sum of this energy of the attraction and then the repulsion energy is what constitutes the what. The hydration energy okay so this is what called constitute the hydration energy but while the water is dragging the the cation and then the anions apart what happened there is an energy inside the salt called lattice energy that is also fighting against against it so the lattice energy is the energy that is keeping the what the salt not to break okay lattice energy is is that energy within the salt that is what that is keeping the salt not to what not to break and so but because water is interacting the with, with the salt but causing it to break there's what to call a lattice energy preventing it to break but one must be overcome 
when the salt is dissolved in water finally then it means that the hydration energy okay that's the dragging energy or the hydration energy has now overcome the salt and uh, has now overcome the what the energy holding the what the salt together and so the resultant okay the resultant that is the net okay the net at the energy okay evolved in the process is what we call the what the entropy of what solution and so when it says standard entropy of solution standard entropy of solution is the amount of energy liberated or absorbed it can be energy liberated or absorbed okay it can be absorbed or it can be what liberated so it's the amount of energy liberated or, or absorbed when one mole of when one mole of a solute that is here so we have what to call when one mole of a solute is dissolved in large volume of water, like one dm cube of water, okay, such a way that further addition of water, of water does not lead to any change in temperature or energy. So let's look here. For for example, I have one mole of salt. I have one mole of salt which I have weighed. Have you got that? Now, this one mole of salt gets into water and is completely broken, okay, by the water. Now the, this breakdown energy is what i have explained here hydration energy has completely overcome the lattice energy pulling them what uh, uh, separating them okay uh, uh, apart okay separating all these apart and so the energy that is liberated or absorbed when one mole of what of any compound dissolve in what large volume of water such as one dm cube of water such that further addition of water does not lead to any change in temperature now this is very important because the first water has completely separated the ions apart and so there's no work to do again the work that is required to be done is done by the first volume of water because remember i told you that when salt the one mole of salt gets into water the salt the water surrounds the salt and the ions are being what pulled okay are being dragged or they are being what attracted and separated fully so all the one mole so all the the one mole of the solute are being separated by that volume of water that you started with have you got now so here the ions are completely now separated within the solution so here the ions here let me use a different color now so if it is this one the ions here are now completely separated in the in the water the ions are now completely separated in the water and so why what happened further addition of water does not work on the what on the salt again because the salt has already what dissolved and so there is no change in temperature upon further addition of water okay or there's no change in energy upon further addition of water change in energy comes when bonds are still um, are still well, okay expected to what to break down but here the one mole of water is completely broken or is completely separated by that one dm cube of water and the quantity of energy that is absorbed or liberated during the process okay is what we call the standard entropy of a solution so once again standard entropy of solution is the quantity of energy liberated or absorbed by breaking what one mole of what of a solute in what large volume of what of water such that further addition of water does not lead to any change in temperature does not lead to any, any change in temperature so this is what we call what we call standard entropy of solution it's a very simple thing to understand now, one of the key things I want you to know is that now the 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 volume of water that first first breaks the one mole of the solute breaks the one mole of solute completely into separate ions, such that addition of water does not cause any further breakdown because the salt has been completely broken down already. And so at this point, the energy that is either liberated or absorbed does not increase or decrease upon further addition of what of water again. That's what we call that. But to be able to account for this how do we account for that so quickly let me give you the how to account for that that energy okay so uh, it is a resultant energy so how do we account for it it's very simple uh, let me uh, take you through this one so that you understand good now what do i mean i have sodium chloride i have sodium chloride here what do i mean i have sodium chloride which i dissolve in large volume of water i dissolve in what large volume of water that is large volume of water so that means aqueous okay now basically what happened the, it breaks down good it breaks down into 
eight ions. So we have this ion aqueous. Have you gotten that? And then I have what the chloride also what negative aqueous. So the ions break down completely. But and I told you that because this is what an enthalpy, then it means that if I want to account for the energy, then it means that the enthalpy change for the reaction. I told you that the enthalpy change for the reaction is always the change. The sum of all change in a what in a product minus the sum of all change. This is what I use in all my what in all my lectures. That the enthalpy change for every given reaction is the change of all product minus the change of all what reactant. And so if now the enthalpy change is what standard enthalpy of solution, then it means that I have to write it appropriately. Okay, then that means I have to write it appropriately. So quickly, I'm going to write the standard enthalpy. Of solution which means that I have to put the symbol you have to put X here okay so the standard enthalpy of solution that is of dissolving sodium chloride in water have you gotten that is the same as what the the chain of all what the, the enthalpy chain of all uh, of, of all product now the enthalpy chain here of all product is what we call the hydration the sum of all hydration energy because it is it is the sum of the hydration energy that broke down the what the lattice energy okay so the hydration energy is the sum of all so the hydration energy is the enthalpy chain of the product and so we have two hydration energy here the the hydration energy please the hydration energy is what led to the breakdown of the reactant to the product and so that is the the sum of the the chain of enthalpy of the of the product is the sum of all hydration energy so we are going to add all the what the hydration energy so quickly let's add all the hydration energy of the of the product okay the hydration energy of the product so quickly you are going to get the hydration energy which is h h y d okay the standard that of all the product now how many product do we have i have this sodium plus okay that is the that and then i'll add this one to it I'll add that one also to it which is the hydration energy that is the standard hydration energy of this okay I'll add this one to it and then this is one thing this is one thing and then I'll minus it from what I'll minus it from the the lattice energy that is the energy to, uh, that the, uh, the energy of the reactant the energy of the reactant is the lattice energy so our minus is from 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 the lattice energy okay our minus is from the lattice energy so this is the formula to the lattice energy as the lattice energy okay so that is it so the hydration energy is to the 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 ions whilst the lattice energy is to the what to the molecule of the solid or the ionic compound so when you do the the, the subtraction you get what's called the standard enthalpy of of solution for the sodium chloride so basically that's how to what to account for for it very very simple now this will end the lecture and in our next lecture we'll be looking at how we can experimentally determine the enthalpy of solution and then we we'll also connect it to what to standard enthalpy of what of hydration thank you